Hey everybody, this is Story Behind the Story and I'm your host, Keegan Cooper. This week we're going to talk to Justin Quick about the Hughes Fieldhouse and Bearcat football. And later on we'll catch up with James about the international flag raising ceremony. But first joining us is Justin. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Almost, you know, it's almost Friday. I'm doing good. I can't complain. Midterms is over here at Northwest for me. I got all of them taken. I'm still passing my classes, so I'm doing good. <laughs> so I'm doing good. Um, but let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. So can we talk a little bit about, you know, the opening for the Hughes Fieldhouse was this weekend and the ribbon cutting ceremony. Yep. So kind of what did that entail? Uh, it was a big ceremony like normal opening ceremonies where they had the ribbon cutting everything. We were out there Friday to cover it. It's first chance for people to kind of get in, see what it actually looks like finished and everything. They're still doing a couple things with like putting nets up and stuff like that. But overall, the football field, the track, all the big stuff is done. There's no no more work that needs to be done. And it's open open for business now. Who had the uh, you know the privilege of getting the you know cut the ribbon at the ribbon ceremony? It was uh, Carl Hughes himself, Carl and uh, Cheryl. They were able to cut the ribbon themselves, being as it's named for them and their family and. They were the ones that were able to cut the ribbon. They actually invited pretty much almost everyone who was in the stands there down to kind of stand there behind them while they cut the ribbon. But, you know, it was a nice ceremony. They had people from like the president, John Jasinski, athletic director, Andy Peterson, uh, mayor, and a couple other people talk. But it, it was a good ceremony and it didn't last too long. So people weren't standing around waiting to, you know, get out on the field. What does this mean for Northwest kind of moving forward, having this, you know, new field house? What does this kind of mean? Well, it just gives a lot more opportunity to the athletic program as a whole. That's kind of what I focused on writing this story was more about the athletic program and in, in, in terms of what it will do for the campus. Uh, the band has already used it a couple times to practice. They get to, you know, now simulate a situation where they would be performing on those kind of environments instead of out in the rain or in a parking lot, something like that. And then track has been in there already, I know, and obviously football will be in there if the weather gets too crazy during practices. And basically any sport that wants to can be in there, uh, even outdoor sports like baseball, softball. They'll be in there to kind of get out of Lambkin, get out of the you know basement down there and be able to actually simulate some grounders and stuff like that on the field. But it's going to be a, a huge upgrade over you know Lambkin, the indoor facility that we have now with Lambkin. Uh, the track is probably going to benefit, be the most clear benefit right off the get-go with the, uh, the indoor season. They've got, I think, four meets scheduled for the indoor season, including the conference championship. So they're going to benefit right away with it. Every athletic team is going to be able to get there and utilize it, this, this new addition. How does this also, you know, it's beneficial for Northwest and the athletics, but it also impacts the community. Um, mm -hmm. They just recently, you know, signed an agreement for them to use it. How does that kind of look forward to, you know, being able to use it for the community use? Yeah, it's the, it's the largest private, prof, uh, private public partnership in uh, Northwest history, and the community has the ability to use it. They were a big part in getting the funding for it, so it's open to the community to come in, you know, walk around, you know, run some laps. However they want to use it, they want to come, you know, have tournaments on the field, you know, little kids' soccer tournaments, that kind of thing. Just however they want to use it, they'll set up events like that. They can come use it for and, you know, just however they feel fit to use it. If it's an event they want to, you know, have a space for, they can use it like something like that, like a, a meeting or a gathering. They've got conference rooms in there as well as classrooms for Northwest students. Come here. That's awesome. I know I was super excited to see it open, to see us get to use it, um, and just see what we're going to do in the near future with it. I want to thank you for joining me, Justin, right now. We'll be right back with some more story behind the story after we take a quick break. Welcome back everybody, my name is Keegan Cooper and this is Story Behind the Story. Joining us next, none other than Justin Quick himself. We like him so much, we thought we'd bring him back a second time. How you doing Justin? I'm still doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> still doing good. <laughs> um, but now, let's talk about Bearcat football. So, homecoming was last week, big weekend for the Bearcats. Got the win, we're in Nebraska Kearney, so can we just talk a little about that? What all did that game have to entail for everybody? Uh, like you said, it was a big win because now with uh, Pitt State going and losing to Fort Hayes, it puts them a full game in front of everybody in the conference for the conference title and now they really do control their entire entirely own destiny uh, going forward um, they came out hot again you know 21 points in the first quarter it's third straight week they've scored 21 point, uh, got up to a 21 nothing lead and from there they kind of struggled a little bit after that to you know find the same offensive movement but their defense you know stayed consistent throughout the entire game didn't give up much on, in terms of the run game which Carney came in averaging 304 yards I think they only gave up about a about 130 something like that totally rushing yards to Carney so they were able to control that run game 
and we're able to force Carney to throw the ball a little more than they were used to. So it, it was altogether a good team win. Let's talk about defense. I mean, Northwest, these last couple of games, you see they haven't been um, uh, giving up very many points, and they moved actually back up to the top, correct? Yep, they're back in uh, Division Two, leading the country in points per game allowed at 10.6 points a game. And it's something they've done the last four years, so it's something they're used to doing, and we've seen them do it since, since I've been here at least. And so it's just it's something they finally got back to the top. They were always they were in the top ten this entire year, and they never dropped out of that top ten. But they finally climbed back up to the top with the, you know the past three games, shutting out Emporia, giving up I think it was seven points or six or seven points to Pitt, and then the thirteen against Carney. So they're able to climb back to the top. Moving forward, they've got Lindenwood coming up next. Kind of what does what does that game entail? What can we look to you know kind of see out of that game and hope to expect? Well, it's the first of three road games out of the four final games for Northwest, so they'll have one home game against Fort Hayes. So it, it's a bit of a longer trip for them, too. It's a little over you know, four hours, four, between four and five hours, so it's something they've got to deal with. Their longest road trip since that Central Oklahoma game, so we'll see how they adjust to this road trip as compared to that one. But it's going to be a difficult test for them defensively because Lindenwood has the ability to put up a lot of points. They put up 40 points in three or four games this year. So it's, it's something that Lindenwood has done in the past and they have been able to put up quite a few points this season. They're third in the, in the uh, MIAA in points per game at about 33 points a game. So it's going to be a test for their defense and shutting them down and see if they can keep that you know deep, uh, scoring low and if they're able to keep Lindenwood scoring low I think their offense will find success against this Lindenwood defense who's kind of been struggling. Um, did Coach Wright have anything to say about you know what this you know Lindenwood means and what they're gonna you know what they need to look for? He actually had a lot of comparisons between the way they run offense and the way Northwest does. They've got a mobile quarterback just like Braden Wright with uh, their freshman quarterback as well so they're both freshmen coming into the game and they run the same style of offense to where they're not dedicated to passing or rushing. They're kind of split even right now with averaging just under 200 yards rushing and passing this year. So Northwest is a little over 200 in both categories. So they're kind of similar systems, similar styles that they play. So he said it has helped the defense a little bit preparing so far this week in terms of having Braden to kind of scout for the upcoming game. I want to thank you again for joining me, Justin, taking the time to talk um, this week about the Hughes Fieldhouse, but also about Bearcat football. And I look forward to seeing the game We're playing Saturday. Yep. Um, so it's going to be exciting. Saturday at 1 o'clock. All righty. Well, that's, um, we'll be right back with Story Behind the Story. I'm Keegan. We'll take a quick break, and then we'll talk to James about the international flag raising ceremony. Welcome back. My name is Keegan Cooper, and this is Story Behind the Story. Joining me next is James. How are you doing, James? I'm good. Thanks for having me. You know, I'm doing great. And the International Flag Raising Ceremony, it's, you know, it goes on every year. A great homecoming event. So when did, when did this all start? When did the flag raising ceremony start? Uh, the International Flag Raising event actually originated back in 1998. So this year was actually the 21st year of it. And it was typically it involves a procession from the library to the Joyce and Harvey White International Flag Plaza, where each country's flag is then raised on the flagpoles in front of the entire campus community. But with the weather on uh, last Friday, it was moved inside to the Olive Deleuze Fine Arts Building and done in the Carl Johnson Theater. But it was still an amazing event, getting to see how diverse of a community we have here at Northwest. How does the ceremony kind of work? How does what's the process of mm -hmm. it? Students can sign up in the International Affairs Office, which is in the library, and they can sign up to carry their flag in a procession from the library to the flag plaza, which is the normal thing. It's slightly different this year with the weather, so they just met up at a, in the Olive Deleuze Fine Arts Building and just did a parade down to the stage in the auditorium there. Um, but typically they do a parade and then they raise all of their flags together as a ceremony. How do students kind of get the opportunity to raise their flag um, to kind of represent their country or even a student that's studying abroad? Yeah, it, essentially from what my understanding of it is from getting to talk to a few students, it was a way to recognize that this is where they're from and also feel a little bit closer to home even though they're sometimes thousands of miles away from home, like from Brazil or Russia or the Ukraine. It's their chance to feel a little bit of home even though they're in an unknown uh, environment and it's not necessarily familiar to them. It's a great way for them to be like, yeah, this is my home as well, but this is me recognizing this is where I'm from, this is where my family is, this is a place I care about. 
And I know you had the chance to talk to a few mm -hmm. students kind of about what it really means to them and their experiences mm -hmm. at Northwest with the flag raising ceremony. What did they have to say? Well, for the most part, they all agreed that it was a good way to bridge the gap between international students and students that are just coming here from like Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, or Missouri. And it was their way of being like, hey, we're from this community. This is how diverse of a community we are and saying like, hey, this is an amazing community where we're all together and that's an amazing thing that just is celebrated every year. I think, you know, that you're per um, 100 percent right, but I definitely encourage students, you know, I was out there mm -hmm. and got to see the flag raising ceremony and watch it this year. I know it was a little bit different. <laughs> um, they changed it up because of the weather, but it's a, a great opportunity. Yeah, even though the, the weather put a damper on the original plans, I don't think it impacted the message in a way. People still came and learned that we are such a diverse group of Bearcats here. They still left with that sense of awe and understanding that we don't all come from the same walks of life. Some people come from halfway across the world, but yet they are here as Bearcats and celebrating that we are Bearcats, but we are also citizens of the world, which is really interesting because as someone like myself who hasn't really gotten to travel much or have much experiences with the world around them, it's great getting to be able to build those connections and understand like, hey, we all come from different walks of life. We all have different cultures, different societal values, different political views. And it's awe-inspiring to go to an event like this and just see that it's all brought together in this one cohesive community that we all love to be a part of. But I want to thank you again for joining us, and I want to thank all our guests, um, Justin and James, for joining us here on Story Behind the Story. You can catch Story Behind the Story live on Facebook and KZLX at noon on Thursdays during Student Media Day, or Monday through Thursday at 6.30 p.m. on KNWT Channel 8. We'll see you next week.